This is just going to be a quick update on the Van Power solar panels and the Van Power Super Power Pro 1500. If you guys didn't see my full review of it, make sure you guys go check it out. I'll put a link up here and down in the description below. But Van Power sent me two more panels, and this is amazing, guys. You have to see this. On that little solar generator down there, I'm getting over a thousand watts of input into it from these five solar panels here. I have four of the Van Power's 200 watt panels connected into a series going into one of the input ports on that little solar generator. And then I have the Blue Eddy panel plugged into the other XT60 port. And when the sun comes out from behind those clouds, I'll show you here, I'm getting over a thousand watts of input from solar. That is insane into that little unit there. So let's get into how I hook this up. All right, you can see here right now it's getting 1,152 watts down to 1,000. Uh, so it's fluctuating there because the sun is up there behind those clouds coming in and out. But these panels here, you want to hook them into series. You can do up to four of the Vampire panels in a series because this little unit will take in 60 to 160 volts of input through this AC input here. If you have this cable that goes from AC to MC4. And if you connect four of these panels in series, I was actually getting 168 volts of output. It's still allowing me to input that voltage into here and still running just fine, not throwing any errors or anything. It's been running now for probably 20 minutes. And you can also run a second panel from 12 to 60 volts into the XT60 port. So if you had six of these van power panels in theory you could connect all six to this unit because you could run two of these panels in parallel into this xt60 port and then run four panels like i have here in a series into the ac port and then you'll be getting probably well over 1200 watts of input however i didn't have a second 200 watt panel to plug into the XT60 port, or I would have showed you that. I mean, if they want to send me two more, I'll be happy to show you in the future, but I doubt they're going to do that. So to connect these into series, what you want to do is you want to take the positive from each panel and connect it to the negative of your next panel and keep doing that down the line here, positive to negative. And then at the end, you'll have a negative and then you'll have a positive from your first panel you connect those to that MC4 to AC cable, which is this cable right here. And I didn't see this on their website, but you could probably ask them to get this if you needed it. Do not do this with any other solar generators. This is the only one currently that I know of that you could put power into the AC input port. So that goes into this port. And then your second input, like I said, you could connect 12 to 60 volts into the XT60 port. Connect that back up and it kicked back in. And I'm not sure if you can see this, 1,110 watts. Gonna be really hard to see, but that's crazy for that input into that little unit. Now I'm gonna show you a different way to hook this up as well. We're gonna run two of these panels in a series, and then we're gonna run two panels into parallel into the XT60 port. You could also run three panels in a series and then run one panel into the XT60 port. So there's multiple different ways to connect these panels to get this unit to charge up quickly. That's what's nice, but you have to have at least two of these panels connected in a series to run through that AC input port because the minimum input voltage on the AC port is 60 volts. And if you've seen my original review video, when I was charging with solar, being that these panels are all connected in series, when I only had two panels connected and would walk in front of the panels or it would get shaded, the input would pretty much go down to almost zero and never ramp back up to continue charging. With four of these panels connected in a series, I'm in front of the panels, the sun's behind clouds right now, and we're gonna see if it continues to charge. I already did this test once with good results. And I'm still getting 300 watts of input, so that's awesome. I just walked in front of all those panels that are in series, never lost all the output. If the sun comes back out behind the clouds, I'll show you that it ramps back up without having to unplug stuff and plug it back in, like I had to do in the initial review video. 
And come to think about it, 1100 watts is way more than 200 times five, which is a thousand. So that's insane that I'm actually getting way more output into that unit than what these panels are even rated for connected this way. That's really, really odd, but I'm gonna charge up super quick like this. Now, one thing to note about recharging through that AC input, whenever you are charging from solar, this does not have pass-through charging to the AC output. So you cannot use your AC outlets if you're charging in that AC input with solar. If you're charging with the AC input with your grid from your house outlet, then it does have pass-through charging, just not with solar input. Now you could disconnect your solar input and leave solar input going into your XT60 port, and then it will do pass-through charging using the AC outlets. That's if you're only going into your XT60 port and not the other port. So just so I didn't confuse you guys, it does have pass-through charging with the AC outlets if using the XT60 port, but if you're using the AC input port with solar, then you cannot use the AC outlets when you're recharging. Okay, so now that's one scenario of how to hook these panels up to that unit with these four panels in series and then this panel into the XT60 port. Now keep in mind, if you have your own panels already and they're not Vampire's panels, if you connect them in series, just make sure you try to stay under that limit of 160 volts of input. Like I said, these were 168 volts output when connected like this, and it was able to run just fine. But if you're connecting your panels, your voltage is probably gonna be different. You may be able to put five or six panels in series. As long as you don't go over that 160 volts, you'll be fine. So now the second way to connect this to this unit would be to connect two of these in series, connect these two in series, and then run this set in parallel with this set into the unit there that would double your amperage and cut your voltage in half compared to how i have it connected now third way you could connect this is you can run three of these in a series and then if you had enough panels you could run three more in a series and then connect those two series strings of three panels each into the unit and then you would still have that xt60 port available to connect two other panels in parallel into there. Another way to connect these would be to connect these two in series and then run that into the AC input port and then connect these two in parallel and run them into the XT60 port. So you can see you have many different options available being able to plug these solar panels into that unit, having two input ports, one being the XT60 and the other being the AC slash DC input port. Really awesome. You can combine panels multiple different ways into this unit for it to charge up super quick on a bright sunny day, unlike today with the sun behind those clouds. But even though that sun is behind those clouds, I'm still getting 197 watts, 204 watts of input that panel is just laying there now because it kept blowing around and these ones with the sun completely behind those dark clouds not even showing it's right there behind those but i'm still getting 200 watts of input into there even on that cloudy day so that's awesome guys let me know what you think down below i've never seen that kind of solar input into small portable solar generators like this and that's going to be a game changer if you're out on cloudy days and as long as you have enough panels to connect into the unit, it will still charge up pretty decently even on cloudy days. Now, two things I wanna mention that I've noticed. First of all, when this thing gets to 100%, for some reason, it didn't seem like the input cuts out. It's still charging at 173 watts. And I've had this thing plugged in now for over an hour. When I had it hooked up the other way through the AC port, it was still getting over 1100 watts when the sun came out, even though it said 100% charged. So I don't know where that power is going. I don't know if it's, overcharging the battery or if it's balancing the cells and eventually it's going to shut off but i've had this thing running now for a while and it's still pulling in max wattage so i would be a little cautious of that you might have to unplug it manually once it gets up to 100 percent and the second thing is if you've seen my review video you noticed that when i got the panels and these cables that came with the panels were wired in reverse the mc4 connectors here were put on backwards on both the first two panels that I received. 
Well, the second two panels that I just received were also backwards. So if you guys get these Vampire panels, make sure you check your polarity coming out of your cable here. If you use this adapter cable, you may not have to use it. You may have another cable that you can use, but if you do get this cable with the Vampire panels, make sure you check your polarity. Make sure you get positive to the red one here, negative to the red one here, when this is hooked up to a solar panel because these two were reversed as well. And I had to cut the plugs off of these ends and put new MC4 connectors on these as well. So I reached out to them twice now and told them they need to fix this so that they don't have unhappy customers. So they're working on it. Hopefully that gets fixed, but those are just some things I noticed and I wanted to mention. So thanks for watching everyone. Make sure you go check out that original review video if you haven't done so and check out some of my other solar generator review videos as well if you're interested in purchasing one to see how they all performed. Thanks for watching everyone. There'll be a link down in the video description to purchase these panels and also this unit if you're interested as well as many other uh, links as well. It will be an affiliate link and I will make a small commission. That's what helps support me creating this content for all of you. But thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe if you like this content and want to learn about solar or e-bikes and just anything that I find that I think I could help people learn from. And I'll see you guys around on the next one.